Now, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. I, I, I mentioned those scriptures to build a base to help you to realise, friends, that God is able to work through you and through me to produce the life of Jesus in the form of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I'll show you how it works. Galatians 5 verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. <clears throat> For all the law is fulfilled in this one word, even this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. This is a good verse. Verse 15. If you bite and devour one another, be less, uh, beware lest you be consumed also by one another. Is it those sort of Pac-Men that go around? Can you see it happening in a community situation where someone gets sick? And then someone else goes... And then we would bite and devour one another. I don't know whether the Holy Spirit speaks to you like that, but uh, that's how I saw it. That's true. A root of bitterness that springs up defiles many. Verse 16, Paul says, I say then, walk in the Spirit. Did you know you can walk in the Spirit when you leave here? Tomorrow, you can walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, Paul says, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You've got problems with the flesh and carnality. Have you got problems with sensuality and pornography? Have you got problems with lust? Have you got problems with imaginations that runs wild? Do you see things that uh, you shouldn't normally see? Are you watching stuff that you normally shouldn't watch? Are you saying things that you shouldn't normally say? Walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. It's a choice. <sighs> it's a choice. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not, th do, not do the things that you wish. Then Paul goes on to say, don't only just walk in the Spirit, but be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. You know, I am convinced that, that all of us are often led by the Spirit more than what we realise. I'm convinced of that. You say, I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah, you were. And who orchestrated that? Who put that together? You've had those situations, haven't you? Right place. Right time, right circumstance, right word. Everything was just right. Everything dovetailed together. Everything intersected, intercepted together. I believe, friends, these are not just abnormal times. These are to be normal times. Where we can be led of the Spirit. Then Paul goes on to talk about the works of the flesh are evident. He talks about the works of the flesh and then in verse 90 he talks about the fruit of the Spirit and they are so contrasted to each other. Here we live in a world that is really basically following the works of the flesh. But here we live in the kingdom of God that projects the fruit of the Spirit. What that tells me, friends, is that you don't live in this world of flesh. You live by the constraints of another world. You live by the constraints of another world. See, your citizenship, your roots are in heaven, not here. You don't imitate this place. You, imit you imitate the place where your citizenship is now, right now. You don't reflect the standards and the fashions and the style and the tradition and the words of this world. No, no, no. That's flesh. You live by the constraints of another world where the fruit of the Spirit is normality. 
It says the works of the flesh are evident. Now, there's, there's no question about it. You get into this arena of works of the flesh and it is hard labour. It is, it is hard yakka. You'll, have to, you, you, you'll be working at this and it'll take your energy. Some of us have had some uh, opportunities over years involved in a job and it is hard, hard labour. It's hard yakka. You come home exhausted. You are absolutely wrung out. It was, it was hard work. This, friends, is hard work. And the wages you get are really not from heaven, they're from somewhere else. But the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresy, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Sounds like today's society, doesn't it? I told you in time past that those who practice or habitually practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And verse 22 says, but the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law or there is no other principle or power or law that can overrule those nine stated fruit of the Spirit. 